we're going to start looking at linear programming duality. Say I have a problem P, minimize C transpose X subject to AX greater than equal to B. And suppose that this has an optimal value, say optimal value is Z star. Now, we have seen that solving P is the same as finding among all solutions to the following system, one that has the minimum Z value. And we have seen in a previous video that we can solve this using Fourier Moleskine elimination to eliminate all the variables other than Z. Because P has an optimal solution, uh, we'll end up with a bunch of inequalities that give lower bound for Z. And there might be other inequalities for Z, we don't know, but the key is uh, we will have inequalities of this form, Z greater than equal to some constant. And in this case, Z star will actually be the maximum over all these uh, lower bounds. Now, what does that mean? If you look at the operations that we are allowed to perform in the fourier Moskin elimination, it basically is just taking non-negative linear combination of these original inequalities. In other words, uh, the inequality that finally says z greater than z star in this final system can be written as a linear combination of the original inequalities using non-negative scalars. Hence, there exists constants uh, y0, y1, up to ym, all non-negative, such that well, such that what if I take y0 times uh, the first inequality plus and so on, where a is now written in terms of rows, a1 transpose up to a n transpose. So we, if we add up all these inequalities, we get uh, z greater than equal to z star. Let's see how this sum actually gives us z greater than equal to z star. Now, z, there's no other inequality that has z other than the first one. So, what we need is y0 equal to 1. Alright, so basically, we now have this. Okay. z minus c, x, c transpose x greater than equal to 0, plus all these inequalities. Uh, give us z greater than one z star. Well, if you look at the coefficients of x, well, this sum, so if we add up all these inequalities, there's no variable x at the end. So that means that we must have 0 equal to minus c transpose plus y1a1 transpose and so on to ymam transpose. And the right-hand side is z star, so z star must be y1, b1, plus and so on, up to y and b n. Now we can rewrite this uh, in a different way, so we must have y transpose a equal to c transpose, and y transpose b equal to z star. So let me summarize. If P had an optimal solution and the optimal value of this problem is Z star, and because of Fourier Moskin elimination method, we can find non negative constants y0, y1 up to yn, such that if we uh, use these constants and take a combination of the original n inequalities with these constants, we will get the inequality Z greater than Z star. Let's make another observation here. Suppose I have a y bar square zero such that y bar transpose a is c transpose. Say x star is an optimal solution to p. And then y transpose a x star is the same as c transpose x star. But c transpose x star is the objective function value of our optimal solution x star. So this has to be z star. But 
we know that y transpose ax star is at least well, this is a y bar y bar transpose b because well, ax star is greater than or equal to b so y transpose ax star is at least y, trans, y bar transpose b because each y bar value is non-negative alright, well, what is this saying here? Well, notice that I am taking y bar transpose a to satisfy the same equation as the y we got up here. But now notice that if we evaluate y bar transpose b, it's less than equal to z star, whereas before the y we got, the y transpose b gives exactly z star. So what this is saying is, if we take any y, okay, satisfying this equation, y transpose a equal to c transpose, and y greater than or equal to 0, then if you multiply that with b, so if you take y transpose b, it can never exceed z star. But we know that there is one that gives me exactly z star. What we can say in conclusion is z star is the maximum value of y transpose b, where y has to satisfy y transpose a equals c transpose and y greater than or equal to 0. But what is this problem here? Well, this is a linear programming problem. All these constraints are linear in y. Okay? It might look a little funny. The way we write is a little funny. But every single constraint here is a linear equation. And uh, the objective function is linear. What well, basically is y1 times b1 plus y2 times b2 all the way to ym plus bn. We now have a pair of linear programming problems. Let me call this d. So this problem d is called the dual problem of p. And the property that we have is if p has an optimal solution, so does B. The optimal values for the two problems are equal. Okay, so if P has optimal solution, then D also has an optimal solution. But one is a minimization problem, the other one is a maximization problem. Now, one thing that we can get immediately out of this is if we find any feasible solution for d, well then its objective function value is going to be a lower bound for the optimal value for p, right? Because we know that any feasible solution to d, uh, its objective function value cannot exceed the optimal value for p. In summary, what we have learned is, if p is a problem of this form, then we can write down a maximization problem of this form. The amazing fact is, if P has an optimal solution, then D also has an optimal solution. And the optimal values are the same. This is the duality theorem for linear programming.